I'm Madeline Madden and I play, I just forgot how to speak. Um, I'm Madeline Madden, I play Egwene Alvarez. <laughs> I'm Zoe Robbins and I play Nynaeve. Yeah, um, I'm Marcus Rutherford, I play Paranai Barra on, on the Wheel of Time. Um, he's one of the Emmonsfield Five um, that Moraine goes to find and um, the Dragon Reborn from in the, in the two rivers where we start our journey. He's sort of the gentle giant, the local blacksmith and sort of the, the big, shy, introverted, quiet one in, in our group. And I'm Yosha Stradowski and I play Ran Othul. And Ran Othul is, um, yeah, he's the sheep herd of the two rivers. Uh, takes care of the sheep and uh, he's someone that really has a big heart and always uh, will follow his heart. And uh, he's also very willing to break his own heart. Um, definitely when he's trying to um, uh, protect his friends. He's very protective over his friends and uh, he'll do really anything for them. Um, so that's Rand. Hi, uh, my name is Daniel Henny. I play Lan, Lan Dragon, The Wheel of Time. I play um, the bodyguard, protector, confidant, friend of, of Moiraine, played by Rosamund Pike. Uh, were you two fans of the book when you auditioned for your part? And did you get the parts you wanted to play? Ooh, I actually had no idea what The Wheel of Time was. The first time I heard of it was when I got the audition in my emails. Um, I actually auditioned for both Nynaeve and Egwene. Really? Yeah. Oh my days. Wow. Game change. Okay. Two yeah. years. And I have, okay. this is the first time really? I've heard about yeah. this. Where, right. Yeah. Cool. Oh, secrets. All right. Secrets. <laughs> um, secrets. <laughs> cool. There's secrets between us. Awesome. Love that. Do you know what? <laughs> I actually felt more like Egwene in the initial audition, audition only because Nynaeve absolutely petrified me. Yeah. I was she's like, like she, she's, she's who is she? <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I obviously now I absolutely love Nynaeve. Yeah, I um, I didn't audition for Nynaeve, but I, I just auditioned for Egwene. Um, and yeah, I mean, I absolutely adore Egwene. You know, I felt like I've grown up with her. So it's it's been a wonderful journey. But I think it's really one of those things as well. Like Nynaeve is, she's, a tough character, but like I definitely, when I was watching the episodes, I was really connecting with her and like her staunch and her like, yeah, yeah, I love it. You're a perfect man. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard of the, the, the book actually, which was surprising given how, you know, how many, like 90 million odd copies that have been, have been sold. Um, but um, yeah, throughout the kind of later on when I found it, I, I had the part, I sort of realised and then a guy I was living with at the time was a huge fan and he kind of told me how sort of big this community was and I realised the, the magnitude of, of the project. Um, but yeah, and as well, and I, I got an essence for the, for the character I was playing, even though the information was quite limited, we didn't really know the names or that, you know, everything was changing during the audition process. Um, I definitely got a feel that, that this is a character I really, really wanted to play, so I was very fortunate that that was um, the way it yeah, say my introduction to the Wheel of Time was through um, this project, um, and uh, I, when I was auditioning for the Wheel of Time, I, everything was quite secretive, so I didn't know what character I was auditioning for. But I knew that what was on the page was, uh, yeah, was something to me. It just hit my imagination uh, straight away without having uh, any context really, and. Uh, and then I, I, I got the part and uh, starting consuming myself in the world of the Wheel of Time. I wasn't a fan of the books. I'd heard of the books growing up. Uh, I'm not going to date myself, my age, but uh, it was it was uh, sort of in the ether when I grew up. I, I'd heard the titles, but I hadn't read them. Um, I'm a fan now, that's for sure. And uh, no, I didn't audition for any of the roles. Land came to me. And I'm not sure how it all kind of worked out, but it was a it was a few months of process of of, of getting the, the green light to play Lan. It was a, a series of FaceTimes with our showrunner and with Rosamond, and sort of you know you want to work out the chemistry, and you know you're on this journey for potentially three, four, five, six years, depending on how well it does. So. There are decisions based on acting, there are decisions based on chemistry, and uh, so it all had to be right, but uh, here I am. Uh, 
so your characters are very good friends on screen how did your off screen relationship help build this uh, this camaraderie Awful, terrible, oh, awful. Like, this is this is quite hard to do, if I'm honest. With you. Um, um, I'm getting paid for this. That's <laughs> the only reason that I'm sitting next to Marcus. Literally, <laughs> um, it was it was lovely, man. Because I think we started this journey kind of together, and it kind of mirrored the kind of journey in for the characters as well. It was kind of like um, we were kind of getting dragged out of like our where we grew up and where where we've been living and out on this crazy journey and uh, being, being thrown into this, you know, this world where you're learning new skills, seeing new things, meeting new people, going through that at the same pace as someone else just allows for that, that friendship um, and bond to grow with. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when, when Maddie and I first started working together, people were asking questions like, how long have you guys known each other? <laughs> well, we met two weeks ago, so not that long. Um, that's, that's, been an absolute blessing that's come out of this job. I mean, you never know the, 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 the connections and the relationships that you make and you kind of just hope for the best. And, and you know, sometimes people don't gel necessarily that easily and that's, that's fine, you know, but just the fact that I've now got a little sister and it's just been the, the if you'll come this way. honestly, one of the, the, the best parts of, of this job is, yeah. is the relationships that we've been able to create and that we'll take away with us hopefully for the rest of our lives mm -hmm. um yeah and it, it, it also informs the way that we play the characters it makes it all the more real and you feel and you care for these people you know yeah. i've had scenes where i'm like looking around at, at some of the cast members in the scenes and i'm like i love you guys like mm -hmm. i genuinely feel similar to to my character in this moment so that's been that's been such a such a gift yeah. So did it add a certain kind of pressure entering this book adaptation considering people already had uh, preconceived notions about these characters and their stories? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a very beloved series and these are characters that people have kept very close to their hearts for decades. So of course there's an enormous pressure um, coming into something like this and wanting to do the best that you can. Uh, I think, you know, there's been a brilliant uh, the, the the casting side of this has been phenomenal you know we've got kelly hendry our wonderful casting director and rafe judkins who have been uh crucial to picking the right people for these roles so there is a lot of pressure but you know it's it's been a incredible undertaking yeah well the, the short answer is yes there's there's immense pressure but i think that's helpful because there's so much pressure that you kind of just got to say, okay, we're going to do this. Uh, I'm playing Lan. Um, I'm so excited for this role. This is a role I've uh, I've wanted for so long, something like this to, to be able to really uh, flex my, my muscles, so to speak, but uh, as an actor, you know, and um, so we feel it, we embrace it. We feel like the fans have been incredibly supportive. The, the Wheel of Time fans are very special. And uh, it's been immensely positive, the reaction. So we actually feel like it's a, they're sort of an extension of us and they kind of stick up for us. And there's always going to be characters that, that sort of aren't what you saw in your head growing up reading the books. I, I totally understand that, but we hope that the essence of Robert Jordan's writing is there and that the character is there and that's what we're striving for. Uh, during filming, when did you, uh, you realize you were part of something huge? Like, you know, this could go on for years on end. Well, I guess f for me it was really um, quite soon, but in steps. So when I arrived at production, you know, they bought an old factory in uh, in Prague and they they built it to what is now the Jordan Studios with, with big sets. So walking around there, you know, and having a tour, um, that made me realize what the skill was of this production, but especially walking into the two rivers and that's the village where these characters are from. Um, they actually built that um, village and the actual houses and the, you know, many, many extras and everyone has a costume and uh, everyone has a makeup artist and the dogs and the, the, I don't know, Donkeys, uh, chickens horses, and goats, and you name it, everything. And, uh, it's a real village, wasn't it? And so yeah. it was a fully immersive experience and it wasn't two kind of like cottages that you were filming with. It was a whole town 360 view with working chimneys and like you said, with a, a huge amount of background artists. So um, I think that's when you realize the magnitude and, and, and the scale of the production. 
think I, I think I kind of realized that before we started, you know, I, when I saw how many <laughs> books <laughs> there were um, and how many copies were sold worldwide, I was like, this is going to be huge, whether I'm a part of it or not. It's not a one year thing. Yes, no, we are <laughs> in for life. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, the first time we stepped onto the Two Rivers set was like we were in the two rivers we were in this world and our floor our, our jaws were just on the floor um you know you were like this is huge like the scale of this show is massive it's like thousand people have all worked tirelessly to to get this show on the on the on the road so it's um it always feels like that hey yeah yeah it, it, it yeah. really does yeah so you, uh, you have quite a few scenes with uh, Roseman Pike. What was it like working with her and also Sophie? Yeah, it was... Oh, I don't know how much I can spoil, but I will say working with, with them both has been such a, a treat. Mm. You know, I, I feel like every day that I, I, I work with them, it's like I have to up my game times a thousand. <laughs> oh my God, I've got to go yeah. back into acting <laughs> classes again. Jesus. Um, but they're also such generous actors and, yes. and, and people and they clearly care for the craft and, and in the industry too. So it's been wonderful to work with them and opposite them and, and learn from them as well. She is, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I was a fan before I'd met her and she is one of those people who lives up to your expectations completely. Uh, she, there's no letdown with Rosamond. She's incredibly professional and disciplined and dedicated. And she makes you better, which is something you want from a partner, which is exactly what it's become. We've become such a great partnership. Um, we rely on each other, not only on screen, but off. Um, we call ourselves the older actors of the bunch because at 40, I'm going to be 42. We're, we're similar in age and uh, we feel like we are the old souls. So it's been really incredible to build this dynamic with her. And uh, I couldn't ask for a stronger partner to, to lean on to. As far as working on the show, we worked a lot on movements. We worked a lot on just subtle communication that we hope will read on screen. It may not all the time, but we wanted to move in sort of a synchronized way at all times to show that bond between the warder and I to die. And hopefully people can pick up on that. I know book fans will, but uh, hopefully non-book readers will pick up on our movements as well. Well, you know, as a young actor, it's, it's really, uh, I feel really fortunate to have the opportunity to you know, be with them on the floor many days. Um, you know, Rosamund is a, is a leader by example. Um, she, um, yeah, you know, she's she's so good. And uh, and I guess it's interesting to see that um, even someone like that, you know, Rosamund Pike, who has worked with so many brilliant actors and directors, that despite of um, the differences you can see that she's going through the same stuff as you are doing mm -hmm. uh, as you're going through so um i guess in the end was it was still all the same uh, yeah yeah and even like with her, like like sophia Fernando, like i hadn't personally worked with her in, in the show and i met her briefly but i think that's one of the exciting things as well is you can you might see a scissor reel or you might have to wait until like a trailer drops and you see the work that someone's done and on the show this big there's different locations, different storylines that you're not involved in, but you realize that there's amazing work being being done and having someone like Sophie Okanedo in it is, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, what are your thoughts on the relevance of the show in today's time? You know, uh, you're the powerful women, brave, bold, beautiful, and learned, and uh, trying to take back power that has been used against them. Uh, and also you'll have a bunch of uh, male leads, strong male uh, leads who act as supporting uh, uh, cast, but your greatest support comes from them. So uh, how would you describe this? Well, it's really refreshing to see that, you know, the, the guide of those young Two Rivers uh, folk is, 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 is a woman. And, uh, and, you know, that in this world, the women are in control. And if men use the one power, they they go mad. Uh, so that's a quite interesting take, I think. And um, it's really refreshing to see in fantasy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think the the characters that Robert Jordan's created. It kind of just feels, even though it does feel like a quite a 
subverting the conventional norms of, of, of you know genre and fantasy it kind of just feels quite natural when you when you see these characters like Egwene, Nynaeve and, and Moraine they just feel like natural leaders in their own way and, and I think um, even though all of them have, have leadership qualities I think that um, that balance kind of flip I mean also allows for really interesting journeys for the male characters as well if they're in a world where they have to find out their strengths through different avenues. I simply think it's very timely. I do think that we are quite polarized now in the world. I think that uh, the, the saturation of media, it, it kind of exacerbates that a bit, but uh, I'm hopeful that a show like this will help open people's eyes and the idea of, of it not being really good against evil, but more just balance and the balance that we need as individuals. And I really love the relationships and how they portray it. I, for one, playing a warder, I'm very happy to sacrifice and to step down and to protect uh, Moiraine. Uh, I think it's a beautiful relationship. And I think that uh, there may be some impact socially on that. People can see that I think the warders do maintain this beautiful sense of masculinity while they're standing standing in the back and just, just being watchful and being stoic and they're comfortable in their silence. And that's a beautiful thing. I think a lot of people have been loud for a long time and sometimes it's uh, it's nice to step back and, and just uh, listen and, and be silent. Yeah, you know, the women the women in our world are subservient to men and, uh, and, and gender roles that we experience in our society. You know, I think that there is a lot of um, characters depend on each other, whether they're male or female or what have you like, it doesn't take away their strength to depend. You know, I know particularly for like Egwene and Perrin, you know, uh, he really depends on Egwene for protection and for the strength. And that's that's not taking away from his own personal inner strength, which I think is really beautiful. Um, you know, it's a reflection of our real world there. You know, we've both been raised by strong women and we have strong women in our life. And that's what it's like in this world. You know, we need to see more of that. Absolutely. But, you know, we can we can definitely look around and, and find strong women in our life. So I think that was inspiration and, and that personal experience really helped with, um, you know, f finding our characters and fleshing out those relationships that they have with each other. So when this show comes out, it's bound to be compared to Lord of the Rings, Shadow and Bone, which are, uh, what do you think uh, sets this one apart from all the rest? It's got Zoe Robbins in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got us in it, so... It's got us, so, um, no. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it is very different in a lot of ways. I think the way that it comments on as many just just spoke about the, the 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 gender roles and the various stereotypes within that that exist within our world you know there's some wonderful themes around balance and duality and equality mm -hmm. and and we explore the ways which we need each other you know at the end of the day that's we, we definitely all need each other and depend on each other to <laughs> evolve as humans but also you know that it's it's interesting about you know the light and dark of, of of the world as well and and how detrimental people can be to one another and right. and, and yeah there's there's a there's a lot of wonderful themes and i think um also the characters that are really grounded and i hope relatable i feel like everyone hopefully who who watches We'll be able to see them in, mm -hmm. in, in at least one character, which I think is really rare and such a, a, a special treat for people that I guess haven't really seen themselves on screen in a way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think all of that and 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 more and Madeline Madden. <laughs> so uh, the VFX and the visuals uh, in this series are top notch, uh, but I assuming most of it was done under a. Uh, in front of a green screen, uh, how did you, you know, emote during these scenes and also stay rooted while, uh, you know, working with nothing around you? Um, honestly, I barely worked in front of a green screen. I Everything we've done has been pretty practical. Our set designer has just done a fantastic job at creating these worlds. So, and of course, we have a, a decent sized budget, so we're allowed to build these sets. and. 
it's it's just immensely helpful to, to the actors to be able to step into the world and, and look around you and feel like you're in these these villages these towns um, so a lot of it has been practical I would say upwards of for me personally 90 percent I've seen blue screens in the distance for certain cityscapes and things but for the most part all of my stuff has been practical including some of the fight scenes um, the Trollocs, Fades, all that stuff is, is practical. It's stuntmen in costumes and they're augmenting from that with VFX, but that's not something I see. So everything I work with is real. Uh, so uh, well, what tiny detail can you share with us about uh, season two? Like uh, uh, <laughs> you uh, went recently to the Comic-Con, but uh, what can you tell us about, uh, about things set to come in the next season? Well, I, I think season two is really interesting because all of the characters are really maturing. Um, more layers are being added. The story becomes more complex and uh, I think we have uh, more meat to the bone uh, as actors to, you know, there's more to play with. Um, and uh, what detail is there? Something juicy is hard. It, I mean, everything just keeps getting bigger, really. Like like you said, like the, the sets, the, the action, um, the worlds that keep on coming in. I think if there's any, you know, for the diehard fans or fans of, you know, of Eye of the World, they might think certain elements might be, you know, missing or crammed into that season one. There'll be things that I think they're very excited to see in season two. Um, but yeah, it's quite hard to give a, a particular. And, that, and that's why I'm so thankful that we can do already, you know, shoot with season two, because I think that's the strength of the Wheel of Time, that the world is so rich. You know, there are 14 books and. And now we're, you know, we have come a little bit closer to that richness, the richness of that world by, by having a season two and, you know, having more characters you know, being introduced. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. That's not really a detail, but... Yeah, sorry, we kind of <laughs> swerved your question. But, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs>